Hi, this screencast is to talk about newsletters and newspapers and to help us build one. To start off with, I would like to differentiate between newsletters and newspapers. According to my definition, newsletters are going to be one page single sided and a newspaper is simply more than one page single sided. So if you've got a double sided document, that would be a newspaper. It's fine to use the terms interchangeably. Uh, I do frequently. For the purposes of this exercise, we are going to be developing a classroom-focused newsletter. This is going to be a document that is teacher-developed, although it may include student contributions. Its purpose is to tell what is going on with the classrooms, um, although it could also offer parenting tips and other useful information for families. The audience for this document are going to be the families of your students. You will be developing a classroom-focused newsletter, also called a family newsletter, in this class. Um, you will place it on your wiki as a JPEG, a PDF, and a DOCX. See the course wiki for the contents of it. It will be three articles, one about you, one about your classroom expectations, and one about an upcoming unit. Do not use a template for this assignment, but do use Microsoft Word. This document will be one page, one side only, and you need to follow the design principles, including the font rules. Make sure your titles pop, stand out, uh, when you're doing this. And remember the story, that's the text of the article, should be not larger than to 10 to 12 size. A second item that you will be creating will be a content-focused newspaper or newsletter. This is going to be student-developed, and the purpose will be your student demonstration of content. Be sure you link this content to your content standards as well as the technology standards. I'm now going to get rid of this box and we will do our demonstration. What we are going to do is I am going to demonstrate how to make the title box for your newsletter. We'll be following steps one through five. Then we will go into making linked text boxes where you're wrapping your text around your photo. And then finally, we will be adjusting some bullets because that is one of my um, pet peeves. People don't attend to bullets well. All right, to start off, to make our newsletter, we need to create a text box for the title of our newsletter. In order to do that, I go up on my ribbon and I simply go insert text box select a text box and I am going to draw one right up here. Next I am going to uh, give my my newsletter a name. I like to call mine the Kramer Crier. I like the, iter the alliteration of that however if you wanted to call it notes from room 743 you could certainly do that. After I have the name of my newsletter, I am going to put down um, some contact information. So I am going to put, um, let's see, I'm going to put today's date. Um, no, I don't think I'm going to start with my date. I think I'm going to start with my name. So my name is Dr. Susan Kramer. And then over here on the right, I'm going to want to put my date. In order to do that, I am going to be setting some tabs. So until I set my tabs, I simply push my tab key once. That will put a tab in, and I will adjust my tabs a bit later. Today happens to be, no, it's April. April 24, 2013. I'm going to hit return. I also need to put my contact information in my title box. So I'm going to put my email address Kramer at uwosh.edu. I'm going to tab. I'm going to put my telephone number over here again on the far right. It will be under my, um, my date. So my phone number is 920-424-1223. Um, if you want to use 555-1212, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to give out your real phone number. The last item that I'm going to do is I'm going to put down my web address. 
So that happens to be HTTP colon slash slash 325 Kramer dot wiki spaces dot com. This is where my families would get a hold of me uh, and our class website. So all is looking good. I have created the text box. Now you should notice that I've got some funky looking paragraph markers here at the end of each of my lines as well as a tab between each of my areas. These are real handy um, items to have showing because they will show you where your spaces and etc. are uh, within your documents. In order to make them show, you'll notice up here on your toolbar um, that there is a paragraph marker sign. I can turn it off or I can turn it on. As you can see, I generally have mine on. We will need these often. Alright, so I've got my paragraph markers. Um, I'm going to set my right aligned tabs but before I do that, I am going to make the font of my title really large. I mentioned before that your titles need to pop. Absolutely, they do. So I go up to my font, and I'm going to choose um, a fairly cool one. I happen to like impact. It's large, it's bold, it's, it's got a statement there. I'm going to choose that, and then I'm going to make my font really large. I'm going to try this. How about size 55? Ah, yes, that's making it nice and big and bold. I have to make my um, text box just a little bit larger to hold that, but this is good. Um, remember our font rules. We have two font families. One is going to be a serif font. That's what I've got going on down here. You'll notice the feet um, on each of the, the letters and numbers. I'm going to be using a sans serif font for my titles. Our font rules are, if you remember, you can have two font families on a page, use one for your titles, and use one for the body of your text. I've got a sans serif for my title, a serif for the rest of it. I am going to center my title simply because I tend to be a kind of formal person and a newsletter I do believe is a formal uh, communication with my families. I mentioned earlier that we need to have our name to our left and our um, date and so forth to the right and we do that via tabs. If you go to the left of your ruler right directly under the bold you will find your tab markers. If you click on that you can see where you set your tabs left, center, right. I am going to click on the right one because I am going to want to right align my date and phone number. The next thing that I need to do is I need to make sure that my ruler is showing. If your ruler is not showing, go up under view, select ruler, and that's how it will show. With your ruler showing, put your cursor up on the ruler clicking it once approximately where you would like your date and phone number to appear. And ta-da, you will notice that it shows up there. That's how you set your tabs. You'll notice that if you put your cursor right on the tab, you can move it to the right, to the left to adjust it. You want approximately the same distance uh, to the right of your numbers as you've got to the left of your name. That tends to our adjustment. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to center the address of my website um, simply because I think the balance works out nicely between my title and that. Now I've got my text box. It's looking pretty good. Um, you'll notice down here in item number four that I want to make a box around that text box. In order to do that, I simply put my cursor on the line around my text box I am going to double click and it will change my ribbon to format. From here I can go up to where it says line. I can choose a line color. I'm going to go with a rust color. I don't know why but that seems nice for today. Then it's going to be a terribly thin line so I will go onto weights and I need to choose a really heavy weight, like six points, so that it counterbalances uh, the, the impact boldness of the text in my title. And there we have got a moving text box, but we have got a text box 
uh, that's got a solid line around it. If I didn't want that line to be solid, I could double click on it again so that my toolbars are out there. I could change and, and make it polka dotted or something, but that's really ugly. Uh, so I will not do that. I also could use to choose to fill in my text box so that I have a light tan underneath it. Um, and I did that. I was pretty quick. I went to the fill um, paint can and I simply chose something in the same color uh, line and clicked on it and it gave me a tan color behind that. That's what we're going to be doing with our text box. Um, you'll notice now I've scrolled it up. I will scroll my text box up to the top of the page. I need approximately the same distance around margin-wise at the top, at the left, and at the right. You can simply eyeball that. You should make sure that your text box is not taking up too much of the page. I'd recommend no more than 20% uh, of your page. Likewise, make sure that you do not have any extra lines between your, your title and your name and so forth. This is for proximity, so everything stays together. I'm now going to save my document, um, and life is good. So we have looked at how to make the fill-in box. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to work on making some text boxes uh, that are going to wrap around a story about us. In order to do this, I need to start by writing a story about me. So I'm going to move my, my directions up here so I can kind of follow them along. I am going to start by making a new text box. I'll make just a little one over here. I am going to call the story Introducing uh, Dr. Kramer. I'm going to hit the return key once. That was my title. And then I'm going to do what I call power typing, where I simply type uh, anything whatsoever, not real words, uh, making sure I hit the space bar uh, so that these show up like words and not just a mess, which is what they actually are. I'm going to do enough typing so that it fills up my text box because I am going to be making a total of three text boxes eventually. The other thing that I want to do is make sure that I include uh, at least three paragraphs. So I'm going to go in my story here just sort of randomly and I'm going to hit the return key. Oh, maybe make that one down here. I'll make my text box a little bit longer and then make my third story down here. So I've got a title, one paragraph, two paragraphs, and three paragraphs, and then it ends. All in one text box. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to for format my paragraphs to provide a bit of space between the paragraphs. In order to do that, I highlight my entire story. I go up to Format, Paragraph. You'll notice that down in this region, I can adjust my line spacing to make single or double. I want to keep it single. I can also adjust my spacing before the paragraphs and after the paragraphs. This is where I'm going to put in five points, which gives me approximately half a line, but not a full line between my paragraphs. This is how we provide spacing when we do not use the return key. At this point, my uh, screencast is just about ready to run out of time, so I'm going to stop it and then do part two. See you back soon.